Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you're with us today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and joining our little YouTube family that we have on here. We just have so much fun encouraging each other and um, just sharing our experiences and everything else with family and stocking up and living a simple life and all that stuff. So if those kinds of things interest you, please consider subscribing and joining our YouTube family. So today I have just a basic grocery haul. This is probably about a two week-ish grocery haul, but we do have company. Um, we've had company for a while now. So it's a smidge more than normal and it is a little bit more than normal, just because than a normal week's worth, I'm saying, just because of company and also because of some of the supply chain issues that I'm kind of seeing coming down the road. So I was like, eh, while it's there, I should just grab a little extra. So um, here we have bananas. Uh, I like to go into Aldi and get a whole case of bananas. This is an Aldi haul. Sorry guys. This is our Aldi haul <laughs> and it's usually one week and it's usually $200 but this week it got stretched just a little bit so we could uh, accommodate company and the food chain supplies that may or may not be coming down the line. So this is our banana haul. We usually get a whole case of bananas at Aldi and then I put them into a cardboard box and I let them get all ripe and freckly. When they do, I peel them all, put them in freezer bags, and put them into our freezer for smoothies. So these aren't necessarily for fresh eating. These are just gonna be stored up. And hang tight to the end of the video, guys, because I am gonna be jarring up some chicken broth. Um, actually, it's chicken bone broth from our chickens here on the farm, and I'm gonna be showing you how I'm gonna get that processed up and put into the pantry as well. So, hopping over here, I gotta get this done quick because it's been sitting here for a little bit. So hopping over here, we have um, some mango, frozen mango, frozen pineapple, and frozen berry mix. We like all three of those frozen fruits to be in our freezer. So we stocked up, as you can see, and we got a bunch. Um, over here, blue corn chips. We don't always have chips in the house, guys, especially right now, it's not top priority, but we do have guests, so <laughs> it just kind of is one of those nice, easy things to throw into a meal, and we do a lot of tacos and chilies and things like that, so chips kind of go well with those things. Um, and then the other thing that I went ahead and bought was some Baby Bella mushrooms. Again, they just go great into um, a lot of different recipes that we make, our cashew cream sauce recipes, topped on top of potatoes, um, all of that kind of thing. And last but not least in my little haul um, is ground beef. Um, we have gone through our ground, we have gone through our ground beef um, that we had from our cow um, and we do still have beef in the freezer, but it is not ground. And I figured while they have it at the store at a decent price, I should just get a little bit and put it away. So that's what this is for right here. And I'm interested to count it up because I ordered 20 packs and I don't know what they gave me. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 packs, guys. So. They didn't have 20. <laughs> so anyway, that's fine. That'll go into the freezer. And like I said, we don't need this right now, but it'll be nice to have it put away back into the freezer. And my plan is I have one freezer for ground beef, and then I have another mini freezer for our, all of the other types and cuts of beef. So I use that, I pull that out, put it in my Instapot, cook it down, shred it, and put it into jars. And I'm working on getting that into my pantry as well, just to free up freezer space. So that's my, um, that's my take on that. That's it guys, that is my grocery haul. <laughs> so uh, beef, mushrooms, chips, which could have honestly been eliminated, and frozen fruit and bananas. It doesn't get more whole and simple than that, I don't think. The frozen fruit we use for our smoothies every day. Um, breakfast are usually some type of oats or oat pancakes or oat waffles, things like that. Um, and yeah, it's pretty simple, guys. We, we eat a very, very simple, basic diet, so um, 
So our groceries are usually pretty simple. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this in the freezer and then I'm gonna come right back out and jar up that broth. Hey guys, so I am ready to start jarring up my chicken bone broth, but first I just wanted to back up a little bit and tell you that the other frozen fruit that I had there in the bulk haul was this mixed fruit. It's strawberries, pineapple, peaches, and mango, and we've been really enjoying this one as well in our smoothies. So I'm going to pop this in the freezer, but I just wanted to show you that this was the other fruit that we have been getting to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this broth out. And what I like to do is get a big strainer, put it in the sink, and I pour this all through the strainer and put a big bowl underneath of it, and I'll bring the bowl back here. So just one second. So I hope you all had a wonderful, blessed Lord's Day. Um, when you're watching this, it'll have already passed, but today was a super blessed day that we had here um, in church. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this bowl into my big strainer and all that's left over guys is just some bones and a little tiny bit of meat is still on there and that'll just cool off and when it gets all cooled off I give it to our big dogs they don't have any problems with it at all. Alright so the next thing that I do is I just simply strain this. This is a big strainer it has big holes and it's just really nice for things like this nice big stainless steel strainer. Okay, so now that I have all of my bone broth there, I'm just gonna take these nice clean jars that are already clean and sterile, and I'm just gonna ladle my lovely homemade bone broth into this. So we eat 99% of plant-based diet here, with the only exceptions being, if those are you who are curious, the only exceptions being um, we do use eggs for baking, and the kids eat eggs once in a while um, for like breakfast and things like that. And we um, don't do any dairy, but um, we do use our honey here on the farm. So we do eggs, we do honey, and we do broths, and we do grass-fed meats that are um, from our farm or from a local farm here, um, or if we can't source that at a decent price, I do buy the grass-fed ground beef, as you saw today on the video, um, from Aldi, I have no problem doing that. And we do meat maybe once or twice a week. Um, sometimes I will offer a little more to my husband because he seems to prefer that, but, um, some of us don't eat meat at all. Some of us eat a little bit of meat. Um, so it's all different, but I do have it available um, a, you know, a few times a week for those who do want it. Um, so we are not vegan on our farm, even though we do have vegan friends and respect them very much. Um, we, do, we are not vegan, but we, we do appreciate um, a plant-based diet, absolutely for sure, and like I said, with the exceptions being that we do use eggs, and we would eat fish if we could um, source it more holistically. Um, we would eat fish more often, but fish is the thing that I love fish, um, and I would prefer fish over chicken or beef, but I'm not super comfortable with the grocery store fish. So um, I would prefer to have our own or catch our own or something like that. I'm just a little funny about that. Our oceans are dirty places a lot of times. Um, so anyway, that's just the thing with fish. But we don't generally have fish in the house um, at all. So I don't know what type of diet you would call that. I, I think of it just as a good farm diet, a good whole foods, uh, pretty much single ingredient diet is what we eat. We eat very plain and basic foods. Um, we don't eat processed 
foods or prepackaged foods other than um, a pasta, of course, is packaged when I buy it. Um, but it is almost single ingredient pasta. It, it's just lentil, it's just red lentil pasta with, I think there might be salt in it, but that's it. And we could do a video coming up if you were interested in um, why we don't do dairy on our farm and what made us make that decision and like if we think we will ever do dairy in the future or anything like that we could definitely do a video for you. I think it's a pretty important topic especially in the homestead world because um, kind of one of the first things that people think of when they think of homesteading is dairy, meat and dairy. Alright so that filled up six jars very nicely. Four jars will be able to fit into my um, my pressure canner so I'll have to do I'll have to bring out both pressure canners I'll run one with four and then run the other one just with two so that'll be fun so I just have my rag and I just add a little bit of vinegar to it wipe off the rims these are pretty clean because I don't think you tripped anything but it's such a good feeling to be putting away food. This one looks a little low. If you have one like this, I think I have two like this actually. It's a little low. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to them. Yeah, so it does feel good to be adding into the pantry. And th these were our last two chickens that we had in our freezer. So we are looking forward to another day um, of Processing, it's been a long time coming, um, probably at least six months since we processed chickens, but there are a lot of extra roosters out there and some ducks that need processing and putting away into the freezer. So we need to do that and stock up our poultry freezer. Just finger tight, guys, is all you need when you put on your lids. All right, so that is all done, all jarred up. I'll leave this up for later. I don't need this anymore. And I'm gonna get out my pressure canners. So this is gonna go in for 25 minutes. And I fill this up with hot water. Five, 25, start. So those will process tonight and then they will go into the pantry in the morning. I like to let them sit and then I'll wash up the lids and I'll wipe the jars down really, really good and make sure everything's really clean. I have been adding my rings back onto my jars very loosely just to store my rings because it's just a great place to store rings and if they're on there loose, it's not going to affect anything anyway. So yeah, that was just a really great um, tip from Homestead Heart, which I love her channel. So if you haven't already, go check her out. If you haven't already, please go over and check out thetexasboys.com. That is our little farm shop that our boys run and all of the profit and proceeds go to them as well as all the YouTube channel. Profit goes to them as well. Um, so everything that you do to support our family all goes to our children and them building a little home-based business here. Um, so if you haven't, go check them out over there. There's lots of new things um, being added to the shop all the time. So you're always likely to see something new. Um, this month we have added new candies over there. There's some honey drop candies that are really awesome. And there's also some lovely marmalades over there that you're gonna really be excited about and some new jams. So go check them out and we will see y'all next time right back here on the farm. We love you guys, appreciate all of your um, love and care and comments and we'll see you guys soon. Bye guys. <laughs>